Hi everyone, welcome back to our YouTube channel Zero Analyst. This is the day 44 of our 100 days SQL challenge. Today I do not have any SQL questions to solve in this video, but I'm going to cover very important SQL concept. So let's see the concept and then we will see how to kind of implement this concept. So if you see this table, in this table we have all this record and we have two employees which are from IT department. Their salary is at the moment 70,000 and the 65,000. Okay. So there is a task which says that change the salary for the people which are from IT department to 90,000. Okay, so let's say you're going to write an update statement. So you're going to say update whatever the RDBMS you're using it. So you would say update, let's say employee employees table and you are saying set. So you are going to change this salary to 90,000, right? So you would say set salary equals 90,000. Okay. Now here I have not added the where condition intentionally. Let's say I forgot to add this where conditions. Now, if you see, I have updated the salary in 90,000, but I missed to add this where conditions. Now, if you see these records, you will see for all this employee, the salary has changed to 90,000. Okay. Now, in SQL, there is no way you can go back to the previous stage. So, that means now you have created a mess which you cannot fix it. Okay. So, if you see here, the employee records, we have all the salary changed to 90,000. So how do we avoid this type of situations in the real project because a company cannot lose the data like this, right? So to ensure we avoid this type of problem in the real project. So the best practice to follow while we are doing any DML functions like updating some values or you know something like this, you should start a transaction and then you do everything inside the transaction, verify the changes. If you feel that all the changes are done correctly, then you would commute it. Okay. Now I'm going to show you how we can fix this type of problem with the transaction block. Okay. If you want to know more about transition, transition, it's in the simple term, you can say that you are starting a transaction at that point when you are starting a transactions, SQL is going to take a screenshot of your database. So everything is going to be captured at that moment. Then you're going to do some changes. Maybe you are adding something, you're updating something and you're doing everything. Once you've done everything, you will verify each and everything. And once you feel everything is correct, then you would say commit. Once you say commit, the changes would happen permanently to the databases. But if you feel something went wrong, then you can roll it back to that screenshot level where the SQL has uh, taken the screenshot where you have started the transactions. So it'd be rolled back to the that level so that you don't mess up something. Okay, so we will see how to start a transactions. So to start a transactions, you can simply go ahead and say, first of all, let me just delete this table and then we're going to create and insert the table again. So it has deleted the table and uh, we have inserted the data again. Luckily I have the data set. That's the reason I could uh, do it again, but maybe in the real time you would not have the data set, right? Like this insert statement. So here we have this to employ, which is called IT and their salary is like now 70,000 and 65,000. So I'm going to start a transaction before I make any changes. Whenever you're doing any DML functions, make sure to start a transactions. To start a transaction, you can say start transactions or you can say begin. So both way it works fine for all the RDBMS. So you can say begin and you would see here it is going to start a transaction. So let me run it. You can see that query unsuccessfully begin and you can see it is showing as a clock. That means it has started a transactions. So whatever I'm going to do, it is going to kind of give me the options to roll back to this level. The level is going to be this level where I have everything properly set. Okay. In this stage. So here, let's say I want to update this salary to 90,000. Okay. And uh, now I would just check the salary. You can see the salary is now changed to 90,000. So that means mistakenly all the salary got changed to 90,000. I can do some more update, but again, it's going to be same. So I would just go ahead and say rollback. So now I have this option called a rollback. So if I just run this rollback, you can see the query is rollback and the transaction is closed. That means now my data is changed to the original data, right? That means now I can correctly change it. So I would just need to start one more transactions here. The transaction is started again. Let me just go ahead and make a change. This time I'm just going to call where department equals IT. Okay. Department equals IT. Okay. Let me just go ahead and run it. So it has changed to update. You can see it has updated two records which is correct. Again, we can verify we're still inside the transition. So if in case something goes wrong, I can roll it back. So I would just run it. Now you can see two employees which are from IT, their salary has changed to 90,000. Okay. So that means I still have the options to roll it back. Now to implement this in the actual database, we just need to run one more command called commit. Okay. So here you need to know one thing, which is very, very important. Once you say this commit, everything is going to change permanently in the database. You will not be able to roll it back. So make sure to verify two times, three times, test it. If in case you feel everything is correct, the way you want it, it is kind of done. Then you would just run this commit because if I just say commit, you can see the transaction is closed now and uh, 
now this changes are happen permanently in the databases here you can see two employee salary has updated to 90000 if i now run this rollback you can see there is no transaction so obviously you cannot roll it back because there is no active transactions okay to roll it back you first need to start a transactions that time it is going to take a screenshot and then only in that level you can roll it back okay so this is how you can start a transactions and uh, you can you have this option which is called rollback and you have commit to implement the changes uh, forever in the database and roll back to go back to this which is called this stage where you have started the transactions that's it for this video guys i hope it was helpful if you have learned something new do subscribe to my youtube channel have a good day take care bye bye